Woods. Um, I know I promised you a video of a ziggurat watercolor painting, and I've realized that I don't really have the greatest camera capability so that you can see the page that I'm working on, but I'm gonna try. Um, the colors might be a little washed out, especially the light yellow is not really showing up my equipment. So um, maybe I'll have to get something that'll allow me to use my phone because I think the colors show up better with my phone camera than my laptop camera. But we're going to do what we can. I will also um, send you a JPEG that shows you a picture of what the finished product should look like. So that should help you get to where we're going, hopefully. Who knows? So first, let's get our supplies, right? You're going to need a piece of watercolor paper. You should have one in the bag of supplies that I gave you. Um, you can use the smaller one. You can use the bigger one. Uh, whatever works for you, whatever you have lying around the house. It's not really a big deal. Um, I have a paint board. You may or may not. Uh, if you don't, you can just... Um, tape your paper to the pa uh, to your table. Sometimes my kids just use plastic cutting boards uh, as their paint board to protect the space and to give them a nice surface to work on. Whatever works. It's really, you know, I want you guys to just have fun with this. I don't want this to be a stressful experience. That being said too, remember that this is a video. You can pause me. Um, you can do things over. You could listen to this another time and try again. If your first one turns out in a way that you don't like, maybe the first one's just a practice run. And that's just fine because I've done practice runs too. And mine is probably not going to turn out to be perfect. And it's certainly not going to be some historical, uh, historically accurate representation. We're just kind of having fun with color, having fun with some of the shapes picturing in our mind that ziggurat with the steps, each rectangular um, section being a little shorter than the one before it. Um, so we're just gonna try to make something representational and have fun with color and uh, just have fun painting. So you've got your board or not, you've got your paper, um, which you definitely need, that's not an or not. Um, tape that down, put it on your board and other than that, you should find yourself a mine's all wet, a paintbrush with a flat um, end, not a round brush, jar of nice fresh clean water, and then you should have in your packet from me, or perhaps you have them already at home, a light yellow, a golden yellow, a blue, and a red. And what you're going to want to do is get either plastic egg cartons that are empty, or if you have an artist's palette, you can take a, an eyedropper or a, a pipette and get yourself a dropper or so full of each of those colors and put them either in your empty plastic egg cartons to keep them all separate or in your palette to keep them all separate. You could also use really small jars. What I would advise you not to do is to use the paints directly from the jars to your paper, simply because you'll be doing more than one project this year with the paint and you wouldn't want to get them mixed up. Or if you accidentally don't rinse your brush or something, you're, you could really ruin your lemon yellow <laughs> or, your, uh, or your gold especially. Okay, so once you've got your paint, your water, your paintbrush, your paper, your paintboard, you might need a piece of paper toweling um, just to dab at what you're doing on your paper if you want to get rid of something um, or you spill. It's always good to have some paper toweling or um, a dishcloth or something like that on hand. Okay, with that, I think we're ready to get started. I'm gonna turn my camera down and see if maybe I can line it up so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, we're going to be starting with our lightest color, our light yellow or our lemon yellow, and, uh, and then we'll work our way up. Actually, before we really get started painting, I really do want you to think about that ziggurat shape in your mind, right? And think about the climate that ziggurats existed in, right? It's dry. We've got a lot of like golden kind of colors. We're in a desert area, right? So we're going to be using those lemons and those golds. So those are going to be probably going to need more of those paints than the others. The blue, you're going to need like a little splotch um, and the red a little bit, maybe more than the blue, but less than the lemon yellow and the, uh, and the golden yellow. So really start thinking about 
getting that idea of making nice straight geometric lines to make those rectangles and picturing them getting smaller and smaller and smaller and building up to the observatory at the top, right, the, um, where the astronomers would be. Um, so really just get that shape and that's basically what we're going to be working with. So we're going to start with our background with our lemon yellow. So let's see if I can make this work. <laughs> All right. And everything is white. So we're going to grab our paintbrush. I'm going to dry mine because we're starting with a dry piece of paper. We're not going to do wet on wet technique for this. We're going to dab. Let me see if I can make my palette visible. Oh, look at that. Bear with me, folks. Bear with me. So we're going to take our light yellow and we're just going to run our brush back and forth in a horizontal motion, right? From the top of our page to the bottom. And I know you probably can't see the paper changing color because I can't. It's all kind of bleached out. <laughs> but I promise you it's happening. It is turning yellow. So you're just going to gently fill all of the white space with this lovely sunshiny yellow right you can just picture it being hot and sunny just put down this nice beautiful background I still have more to go. You can just go back and forth. And the nice thing is this is going to be the kind of motion that we use for most every part of our painting. I should have taped my paper down. Do as I say and not as I do, huh? That would have been wise for me to take my own advice. All right. So now that we have a sheet, our paper is just covered in yellow. It's nice and sunshiny. You can give your brush a little rinse. Get off the excess water. I'm going to dab mine on my paper towel and then I'm going to pick up some golden yellow and I'm going to start maybe a third of the way up from the bottom just swiping over in some nice back and forth horizontal motion. Just spreading the paint so it doesn't look blotchy in places. And this is kind of my, uh, this is my horizon line. This is sort of creating our ground on which our ziggurat will sit. So I think I've got what I like there. Oh, you can actually see that. Woohoo! All right. Now I'm going to rinse my brush again. Jar of water here. You can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, with my disembodied hands on screen. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my brush once I have all the color out of it. I'm going to take it and I'm going to create a little bit of white space in the center here, or maybe lighter space, I should say, where my ziggurat is going to go. I'm going to pick up some of this color and remove it. And I don't want my paper to get super soggy, so I'm really trying to brush off as much water as I can from my brush so that it doesn't leave a puddle behind. And I can dab it on my paper towel as needed too. But that clear water will pick up your paint so that you have space in the center where your ziggurat's gonna go. And you can make your ziggurat really big or a little daintier. Make a decision in your own mind on how you want that to look, right? 
because as long as your base is, that's going to sort of determine how long and how big your ziggurat is. So once you've gotten your space cleared, at least a rectangle of it across for as long as you want the base to be, you can take that gold again with your clean brush and make a nice long line as long as you want your base to be. And clean it up as you go. If you don't like its length, you can easily make it a little longer, right? This is a pretty forgiving painting to start with this year. Okay, so once you've got it about where you want it, you can pick up some more gold paint if you need it, and you're going to begin your next level of your ziggurat by coming a little bit in from that base rectangle. And you're going to drag your paint across, stopping a little shy of the length of that base rectangle. Now, if you mess up and you keep going, you could just have it meet the ends of that rectangle and you just have a little bit of a thicker base. Just start again on the next level, making it a little bit smaller as you go, right? And I just did a third level. I'm going to give it a fourth level. You know what? I think I'm going to go give it a fifth top level here. And then when you've given it as many levels or steps as you'd like, rinse your brush and you can get a little bit of blue on the end of it and put a little observatory on top. Let's see, right in the center. That's going to look a little greenish because yellow and blue make green, yeah? And mine's not quite meeting my top, so I wanted to do that. Now, something else you could do is rinse off your brush. And on one side of your painting, you can lift off some more of that yellow. Just keep getting some clear water. Lift off yellow in a circular motion. We're going to put a sun up there in the sky. I'm going to do it on the right-hand side of my paper. You can do it on the left. You could do it in the center, All right? But I'm going to remove some of this yellow, giving me a nice white circle. And into that white circle, I'm going to put some red because I haven't used red yet. And I want everybody to come to the party here. I'm going to do that. You can't see my entire circle. I promise it's a circle and not some strange looking blob. And if you'd like, you can add some gold in there to make your sun like an interesting shade. For your sky, if you'd like, maybe this is not, maybe this is sunset. You can put some orange, some red in there, whatever you'd like to do to add some definition perhaps, to add your own little unique stamp on your painting. All right. Just remember to rinse your brush between colors. I'm adding some gold and some red to my sky. It already has that yellow base, so that's going to help with my colors blending. And it is really difficult to see what I've done. So you can follow my instructions and look at the finished painting. Um, that might be the most helpful thing to do. It's good to know. It's all a big experiment, huh? We're all figuring out this 
online teaching stuff. Um, my sky to come a little closer to my ziggurat, but I don't want to lose the definition of my ziggurat steps. All right. Let's see if I can, I might be able to hold this up. That would be nice. So you can see what's going on. What's going on with this very simple painting? I'm going to put some red in my ground, in my golden ground, to make it look a little more brown. And because that just feels right. But maybe that doesn't feel right to you. So you don't have to. But as I'm looking at it, and I didn't do this on my first practice run, but it needs a little variation. It was looking a little monochromatic. So I'm going to add some red to the gold on my ground. Okay. And I think, I think that's about done. I might work on it a little more as it dries. But that's the basic idea of our exploration of how these deserty colors are gonna work together. create a little memorable ziggurat. All right. I will send you this picture and I hope you find some time to play with paint and I hope to see what you create. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I just keep messing with this a little more and a little more. I'm wondering if we wanna add some definition to our steps here, to our layers. All right, so let me see if we can sort of see this. Can you? Let me pull my video back. You really can't. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let's, that's my face. Okay. Let's see if we can check out. Yours is gonna look something like this. The colors are a little wonky. But I hope to see what you come up with. Um, and uh, I'll see you Tuesday. Bye.